You have seen and laughed at multiple mockumentaries. From The Office, Parks and Recreation to Borat, this form of comedy is influential and widespread. And if you do that, they won't like you. You want them to like you. And so that way you can get money from them. The essence of a mockumentary is quite simple. It aims to ridicule the characters or to use them to expose a political, social or an interpersonal issue in a satirical manner. As the name suggests, the basic style of a mockumentary is that it imitates a documentary, meaning that it uses conventions that we as viewers associate with telling of a story that is grounded in reality. In this video, we will overanalyze comedy shows that use the format of a mockumentary to figure out why is it so funny why does a mockumentary work so well at making us laugh what are some typical camera moves repeatedly found in mockumentaries and why that is the case what is the point of self-reflective interview-like moments that characters have one-on-one -on -one with an invisible cameraman how are mockumentaries structurally different from other shows and what does that result in The way the camera moves in a mockumentary is very, very important because as we will see later, there is an additional structure layer involved in making of a mockumentary. Anyway, the way the camera is positioned, the angle at which it captures the shots and the manner in which it interacts with characters is a part of communicating to you and me about the emotional vibe of the situation that we are seeing on screen. In a typical comedy series, characters pretend that the camera is not there, we are simply magically observing their lives in all moments at all time. But this is not the case for mockumentary. And in particular, there are three camera tendencies more visible in mockumentaries than in other forms. The camera shake serves the purpose of verifiability. It is selectively applied to convey to the viewer that there is a cameraman chasing after our protagonists. Mockumentaries blend reality and fiction by sometimes lowering the comfort of watching to achieve an effect of truth-telling. This is exactly the case with the camera shake. Of course, this scene is unplanned, and here is a shake of my camera to prove it to you. The imaginary cameraman is right here with our protagonists. Whatever impacts them impacts him as well. So you can trust this footage, it is factual. Basically, often the camera shake just makes you for one more moment forget and become more immersed in the scene. Whether as running gags or handheld camera shakes, the end result is often the same. You feel more involved and you believe the story more. Even if you know, it is a comedy series. Secondly, what we see recurringly in mockumentaries such as Parks and Recreation and The Office is that the characters are glancing into the camera when they are being filmed. Not necessarily only when they are being interviewed, although this is also the case, but more often when the camera is not specifically focused on them, but they glance into it to check in. As you know, I'm heading to New York today doing a presentation on the branch to the new CF to the new CFO. And you want me to come with you? No, the opposite of that. I will stay here and run things on this end. Run things on this end. Good kid. Now, glances into the camera can mean different things. For example, from Michael in the office, the glances tend to focus on, did you believe me? I hope you bought what I just said because I completely improvised and invented everything in the moment. In Parks and Recreation, when Ben solves Leslie's Valentine's Day riddle, he's looking into the camera and he's thinking probably something like, does she know I'm bluffing? Little Sebastian. Yeah? At first you did not understand what made this tiny horse so special. And now you love him more than I do. Yep. I miss him every day. <gasps> really? I tried to make that hard. I'm yeah. very impressed with you. Yeah, some of them were kind of tough. <laughs> Finally, the camera pretends that it is constrained, meaning that there is a false perception built over time where the filming is restricted to uncomfortable shots. The scene could be presented better, but while what you are seeing now is not the most convenient and professional shot, it is a more real way to catch our protagonists. So I guess I was wrong when I said once you get older it's harder to make new friends. How did the dude in the trench pull? Sometimes we have to peek, sometimes we have to zoom in and zoom out. So what is the impact of this technique? I... I can't. 
can't. Yeah. You have no idea. Don't do that. What your friendship means to me. Come on. I don't want to do that. Now, there could be a better way to film this dialogue between Jim and Pam. However, as a viewer, you understand at this point that each of them is being followed by their own cameraman, so they are being filmed only from two places, two distant positions, as if the crew is pretending to give them some privacy and personal space while also listening on their private conversations. Happy Valentine's Day, darling. Love, Bob Vance. Vance Refrigeration. <laughs> wow. Mockumentary is characterized by many truth-building attempts. This means that it is based on selectively choosing aspects of the emblematic documentary style shots. For example, a direct interview followed by showing you what the alleged evidence is, that is, what happened and the relevant facts. So suddenly the whole principle that the working classes and women must sit there and put up with the way that society is. I give Leslie the same present I give everyone, a crisp $20 bill. And every year she gets me something thoughtful and personal. It makes me furious. So the mockumentary is building its veracity on the use of those documentary style devices. It wants to, at least for a few moments, make you believe that you are being shown in unscripted real-life scenarios from the life of the characters. For example, from the life of Jay and Cameron in Modern Family. And that later on, you see the actual embarrassing, moving and meaningful moments of their lives. Cam has this crazy theory that if he was straight and Julie Roberts were single, they be dating. It's not crazy. I met her once in an AIDS walk and our chemistry was palpable. No, you handed her a bottle of water. And her fingers lingered. Because you wouldn't let go. I could totally pick up any woman in here. In this manner, the mockumentary is simulating reality and placing itself comfortably at a possible line somewhere between real life and fiction. As I mentioned, a mockumentary simulates being a documentary, meaning that it uses conventions we associate with documentaries. In particular, interviewing somebody, letting them state their point of view, and then showing different perspectives on an ongoing situation. Barry the new evidence. And that's exactly what's happened. And the Minnesota coronary study is a perfect example of this. The Heart Foundation didn't come and say, sorry, we're wrong. They just ignored it as if it didn't happen. And they continue to promote vegetable oils and polyunsaturated fats. Uh, if that had been published, almost certainly what we eat today would be, would be different. This is a reason for everyone to be outraged beyond concern. Documentaries try to convey a message or shed light on an important issue while maintaining an illusion of objectivity and veracity. Documentaries want you to think that you made up your mind after seeing all the facts and perspectives that the makers have kindly provided you with. Now, mockumentaries follow this filming style selectively. A typical feature of this form in a mockumentary is interviewing the protagonists and showing an interwoven footage with clips of what they actually did. Oh, in the company prep. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thanks for inviting me. You were right, I needed it. So okay. thanks. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet you and uh, you guys have a, have a good time. Here. Okay. Talk to you one day. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Love triangle drama. All worked out in the end, though. The hero got the girl. Who saw that coming? I did. This footage serves as evidence to confirm what the character was saying, or serves as a confrontation showing that they contradict their words with their behaviors. If I was going to make a complete ass of myself, I didn't want to remember it. The big drug I gave him, baby aspirin, orange flavored. He could have chewed it. Moreover, documentaries use another technique that viewers associate with them and that has been transplanted into my mockumentaries, and that is narrating to frame the storyline. There is a voiceover as events are unfolding. In Modern Family, Phil narrates his new friendship with the neighbor. How did they meet? Why is it great to have a new friend? What did he learn from this new relationship in his life? So I guess I was wrong when I said once you get older it's harder to make new friends. How did the dude in the trench pull? Andre, it turns out, is an orthopedic surgeon, handy with tools, and a great guy to hang out with. Plus, he's a badass black man that gives me extra street cred. 
This is a type of a verbal testimony that, in fact, relies on our association with the conventions of fact-based TV formats, and thus gifts the characters with some truth-telling capacities that they didn't have as simple comedy characters before. You are re led to believe that you know not only what Phil meant to say, but also that you have seen all aspects of the events he's describing that he would rather hide, and therefore you have the full view and understanding of the situation. A mockumentary draws on parody and satire to achieve humor, but from a more technical point of view, it also has additional potential to introduce comic situations and aspects to the show because of the difference in structure, in the layering. Let us first consider what normal comedy scenes and TV shows work with. At the core, we have the comic scene, the what, meaning whatever is being filmed. Then there is a behind the scenes, which we as viewers never actually see. We can only perceive it as the camera is moving, and we can catch it in the way the camera is changing angles and switching from one character's face to another. The final layer in a typical structure is the audience interface, meaning the final product composed of the previous two layers. Now, the scene does not interact with the camera, but it does influence the audience, meaning that because of being an invisible, all-observing viewer, you get to see funny situations that make you laugh through layer number two into layer number one, through the behind the scenes into the scene itself. To show you what I mean, we will examine a clip from Big Bang Theory. The clip is basically just a short conversation between Sheldon and Leonard, where Sheldon explains his elaborate lie to his roommate. I still told her I lied for a noble purpose, to spare me the social embarrassment of having a drug-addled first cousin, which I'm assuming is embarrassing, yes? Now, let us rewind it and focus on two key moments. <laughs> You still told her I lied! You will see that the camera shot will now switch between Leonard and Sheldon. These two characters are looking at each other and interacting with each other. You as the audience member are treated as an invisible observer. Both verbal and non-verbal communication occurs between the serious characters only. For a noble purpose, to spare me- Camera is merely a tool used to show you what is happening. In this situation, the comedy is derived from the absurdity of the situation existing between Sheldon and Leonard, and the fact that you as an external viewer have a more objective perspective and can fully appreciate what a ridiculous conversation it actually is. Let us contrast this with a mockumentary. A mockumentary introduces one more layer to the scene structure, what I'm going to call the fake behind the scenes. You could say that the additional layer is in fact part of the layer one, the scene itself, the thing that is being filmed. But for the purpose of this video, we will distinguish it from the what. Now, as a result of this additional layer, there is a much more rich and often a more intimate vibe to the scene you're watching. You feel like the scene is more authentic. There is an additional interaction space between the character and the fake behind the scenes, the non-existing cameraman. Often we will see that a character is different when interviewed compared to when they are being filmed, meaning that there is a discrepancy between what they say and how they behave, where we get to see who they really are. And the additional layer of the fake behind the scenes, the invisible cameraman, is exactly how this effect is achieved. So for comparison, let us take a quick look at a clip from Parks and Recreation to understand how this additional layer is worked into the mockumentary structure and with what results. So this short scene is one where Leslie follows her friend Anne out of Valentine's Day party. And Anne lied to me about this date. I mean, so many injustices. Anne would never do anything to piss you off, Leslie. You guys are such close friends. It's lame. Just have a nice night with Ben and forget about this. Okay, fine. I will let it go for now. But I want you to know that I think there is some... Okay, she hung up on me. We will now rewind this scene to see what makes it different from a traditional comedy show and why. The first thing to note is that the camera follows Leslie to her car. This is supposed to provide continuity of events, but also adds authenticity to our viewing experience. We are with the protagonist as and when the events are unfolding. This interview never stops. The fake cameraman documents her evening all the way through. Me about this date. I mean, so many in 
Whenever Leslie speaks of somebody, the camera moves back and forth between her and the thing she's describing or ranting about. In this case, the camera shows us Anne walking to a restaurant. We see whatever Leslie sees, as and when she sees it. We switch between her perspective and the perspective of a non-existing cameraman. Do anything to piss you off, Leslie. You guys are such close friends. It's lame. Just have a nice night with Ben and forget about this. This theme continues when Leslie speaks on the phone to April. There is presumably another camera following April and the film immediately switches to show us a broader perspective, to show us what was happening elsewhere when Leslie was following Anne. But because this episode is focused mainly on Leslie, only the minimum necessary scenes to document the situation are provided to us. Okay, fine. I will let it go for now. But I want you to know that I think there is... Okay, she hung up on me. Finally, the pinnacle of a mockumentary, a glance into the camera mentioned before. Very revealing glance into the camera lasts less than a second. Leslie interacts with the simulated behind the scenes layer, and in this moment she exposes something about herself that we would not be able to see in person, but can grasp from this sneak peek into her private life. This is part 3 of Comedy Dissected, where we take a deep dive into what makes a series or a character funny. If you want to suggest a show or a favorite character, drop a line below. Thank you for staying until the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed it. Of all the important aspects of a mockumentary, what is arguably the most striking is the ability of this comedic form to comment on itself. All the elements mentioned before, the camera moves, the shake, the layer structure, the documentary interview style are important to build this final message. That audiences are more gullible than they believe themselves to be. You are more likely to laugh at the mockumentary because you are understandably amused at the discrepancy between what the character says and how they really behave. At the same time, you are tricked in exactly the same manner. You are amused by a farce. This is not to criticize the mockumentary, on the contrary, I think this is exactly what puts this form of comedy in a perfect position to comment on current social tendencies and problems we face as a society. <laughs>